Welcome back guys. In our last Kohler video, we changed out the fluids, the spark plugs, and the filters. In this video, we're going to remove the flame arrestor, clean it, top off the fluids, and give it a test run. To access the flame arrestor, remove the sound cover if you have it, and then loosen these four bolts on the plastic cover to the left side of the motor. The coolant overflow hose can remain connected. You'll just need to swing the whole piece to the front of the motor. Once the cover is removed, you will see the flame arrestor housing. It's secured to the carburetor with three screws. The screws hold the whole assembly together, including the flame arrestor, which is sandwiched between the two halves of the cover. This was my first time doing this, so when I pulled all the screws out, the flame arrestor dropped out of the housing and down into the bilge. You don't need to remove the screws completely. Keep them partially in the housing and the whole thing will stay together, allowing you to pull the cover off and grab the flame arrestor. Using a shop rag, I just cleaned up any residual oil that was on the housing. My flame arrestor was in a surprisingly good shape. Flame arrestors are different than air filters. You don't need to replace a flame arrestor. It can be cleaned with a degreaser solvent, air pressure, or even soap and water. It's made entirely of a metal or brass, which doesn't rust. So spray the flame arrestor liberally, scrub it if you wish, and I rinsed it out with water to get all the solvent out. Then make sure it's completely air dry before you install it back on the carburetor. Putting the flame arrestor back in the housing and getting everything lined up was the most difficult part of this project. You need to line up all the holes completely and then get the screws inside before you attach it to the carburetor. Then install the whole housing as one piece. Once you get the flame arrestor housing lined up with the carburetor, tighten the screws by hand and then snug them up with a screwdriver. Once the flame arrestor housing is properly secured, it's time for the plastic cover. Reinstallation is the opposite of the removal. Just hand tighten those four bolts and then get your socket wrench on it to send it home. Don't over tighten these four bolts. They have rubber bushings that keep down some vibration. I was having an issue with my generator stalling after about five minutes of running. I found that my coolant level was a bit low in the reservoir. So I topped up the overflow container with new antifreeze. I also checked the oil level to make sure that was in good shape. Now for the test run. Starting the generator took a little longer than I had anticipated. However, I haven't really used it much yet this year and didn't give it a chance to really stretch its legs. What I did notice, which I thought was interesting, observing the tube at the bottom of the overflow reservoir, there were small bubbles coming up every so often. That's an indicator that you have air pockets in the coolant passages in the engine and that needs to work itself out or you could overheat the engine or the engine may stall thinking it has low coolant. After running the generator for about 20 minutes, the coolant stayed at a constant 200 degrees, which is right where it should be. I do seem to be having an issue with the oil pressure gauge. It either shows zero when it's not started, or it pegs the meter all the way to the right when I start the engine. It never goes in the middle. If anyone knows what that might be, let me know. So everything seems to be running as it should. And 
not a moment too soon, because next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. So thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you're interested in watching other maintenance videos or our other adventures, hit that like and subscribe button. It really gives us the drive to keep bringing you these videos. So once again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.